Hey guys and welcome to Words of Scale. So today I wanted to touch upon a very important topic in SEO, which is information gain. And time and time again, I see questions from the users about what constitutes informational gain, how to achieve informational gain. It's not a very complex concept. We can all agree that just regurgitating the top three, top five results on Google will not get you to where you want as far as informational gain goes. So today we're going to explore that topic. I'll give you a few prompts that you can use with perplexity. Also, I'll show you a custom GPT that I built that does pretty much the same, but in a semi-automatic way. So let's get started. So information gain is an important concept in SEO that refers to providing additional, unique and valuable information in your content compared to what is already available from other sources ranking for the same topic. It's about offering you new useful details that go beyond just repeating what other top ranking pages are saying. So the SEOs of uh, 2010s and even early 2020s would tell you, like, look at the top three ranking articles, mix and match the headings, and you'll be all set. Now it's not sufficient anymore. So Google may calculate information gain scores for documents to assess how much unique information they provide relative to other sources, a search you may have already seen on the same subject. Focus on information gain allows content creators to leverage their expertise and unique insights to create differentiated content rather than just chasing arbitrary contact length or keyword targets. Tactics for improving information gain include conducting original research, providing a unique perspective or opinion, building on or expanding ideas from other sources, and using your own base business data to inform content. So basically, information gain is threefold. Anyway, you can show your own expertise or EAT on the topic. Could be achieved through a uh, EAT focused uh, intro, like I'm teaching in my course. Could be just a content gap. So Maybe, just maybe, some of the articles have not covered an essential part of the keywords. Just so happened that they didn't, and you can close that gap. That would be, I think, the easiest one. And the most difficult one, the hardest one, would be creating unique pieces of data, statistics, research. So today, we'll be focusing on the middle one, which is the content gap which I think in most of the cases is the easier one to close, easier one to achieve. So now, how can you use perplexity to close that content gap? I'll give you a few prompts and you can just repeat the process and then I'll show you a custom build GPT. So step one, let's choose uh, Claude Obus, which I had already done before. And let's uh, prime or pre-prompt the AI. Are you familiar with the information gain concept in SEO. Yes, I am familiar with the concept of information gain in SEO based on the provided search results. Google has a patent on user information gain scores. Focus on information gain encourages content creators to provide unique insights, blah, blah, blah. Gives you a very good summary. And as you see, I'm using Cloud3 Opus. Then we can ask a follow-up question. What are the top five results, URLs for the keyword of I'm using Agility Writer Review as an example on Google. And this one is kind of tricky because uh, whichever LLM or environment, perplexity is an environment you use, uh, you're going to get slightly different results. So uh, ChatGPT would use Bing. Perplexity hopefully uses Google. Uh, you might get uh, good results with uh, Gemini, but don't expect a word-for-word SERPs replica Firstly, it will be uh, dependent on which country you're accessing your LLM from. And so they might not be in the exact same order that you're seeing them in. I just know this keyword and I know that this guy here, this guy here are occupying the top three spots. So this would be sufficient for me. Based on the provided search results, the top five URLs ranking for the keyword agility right review appear to be. So this is not necessarily 100% correct. But in most of the cases, this will give you a very good ballpark idea of uh, what are the general content gaps. Now, the next prompt would be analyze the top five results in Google for the keywords Agility Writer Review and suggest what complementary information can be added to fill in the content gap. And I would skip this because I want AI to give me the suggestions. I don't want to prime it anymore. Based on analyzing the top five results for Agility Writer Review, here are some suggestions for complementary information that could be added to fill content gaps. More detailed feature comparison to with other AI writing tools, objective performance tests and benchmarks, 
perspective from a wide a wider variety of users such as bloggers, copywriters, agencies. Deeper dives into the user experience, more frequent updates as new features and capabilities are released, tutorials, head-to-head -head writing tests, and I know this keyword because I'm, I used to rank number one for that keyword. I know that definitely we can have more comparisons, performance tests. I think I'm still the only article that actually shows the results as far as the Storage Console goes. And yeah, so these are some pretty good suggestions. Now, once you've gotten this, another follow-up prompt would be analyze the above and rank one to ten based on how well they fit the original search intent of the keywords. Here is an analysis of the suggestions ranked from one to ten based on how well they fit the original search intent. So the above eight suggestions are being ranked from one to ten based on relevancy basically. So at this point I'm more than happy with the suggestions. I just want this to be more bite-sized and visually appealing because I am a visual learner. And here I'm getting a very concise easy to read table. So Detailed feature comparison scores 10 out of 10, objective performance 8 out of 10, and tutorials and walkthroughs 9 out of 10. So these three would be the ones that I would focus on. Comparisons, performance or case studies, and tutorials. Now this is a manual process, nothing fancy, and this gets the job done. But for my helpful content, Students, I've created a GPT, and so let me remind you that so the Helpful Concept Mastery course is being sold only for 97 bucks, and now you have access to my AI Detection Ninja course, previously valued at 200 bucks. So you're getting the AI Detection Ninja course, you get 30% off the Niche Hunter course, and you get four and now five free GPTs, including the famous Outline Genius GPT, and all the lifetime access to all the future updates. And I think this is massive, enormous value for 97 bucks. So let's go to ChatGPT. So this is set to private, so no other user will get access to that. So you can enter the keywords, like Agility Writer, for example, and our keyword is Agility Writer Review. Based on the top ranking reviews of Agility Writer, the two is highly regarded, blah, blah, blah. And you can see you are getting pretty much the same suggestions worded differently. No, we have a couple of new ones, like integration capabilities, and we all know that Agility Writer integrates with Neural Writer now. But the top ones, detailed comparisons, case studies are the same. So you're getting to the table straight up without the manual process. And then if you want a little bit more dialed in process, and I would, uh, you could just attach the articles. And I've already done that. I've just copied the articles, the top three results from SERPs to docx and now you're just making sure that uh, only those articles that you think are worthy are being analyzed it will give you a quick summary of each of the articles so article one article two article three and i feel that the suggestions are more dialed in although there is a huge overlap with uh, the keyword route that we that we have taken before so you're getting case studies scored at nine more videos scored at eight comparisons and you can really dial in into each of the specific articles to see where the individual content gaps are and then uh, this is basically a summary so this is it this is how you can approach information gain once again there are a few ways you can go about it you can approach information gain through real expertise and EAT, uh, then you, you can go about it with content gaps, and this is what this video is about. And then you can approach it with uh, unique data sets and statistics, and uh, I will have a uh, video shortly inside of my course about that. Hope this video is helpful. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.